There's an old saying, today me, tomorrow you. And I think that kind of describes what's going on here. Remember yesterday we had that big storm system up there in Utah. That's moved over the past 24 hours towards Texas. So we're getting a change in the weather here. And you can see those gusty winds as that cold air comes southward. And winds on the whole, they're about 25 to 35 knots. I don't really see much above that. The leading edge of the cold air, well, that's pretty easy to find. It's roughly like that. You can see that temperatures are up to almost 80 ahead of that front. I think that's the warmest I'm seeing right there at Shreveport. I think maybe going down, at, yeah, around Hondo, Texas, around San Antonio, it is 80, but a rapid decrease into 40s up to the north. And as we pan further up into Oklahoma, Missouri, they are getting snow. Temperatures in the low 30s there. The snow area covers about this region right here. Meet our observations. That's a good way to kind of delineate the general areas. And then out ahead of it, it has not quite changed over to a frozen precip type there. So over the Ozarks proper, it is rain. Is this causing a hazard to traffic? Well, no, not really. Everything's moving. Don't see any trouble anywhere, really. All the roads are good, and I think with warm pavement and not a whole lot of snow, that's helping to keep the roads clear. And we can see back and behind it, there are 40s flowing into the backside. So any of this cold weather is going to be very short-lived, except during the overnight hours. There's a quick look at what Interstate 44 looks like around Springfield. That's a live shot as we record this. The roadway is looking really good. I guess uh, the pavement is quite warm, but uh, that looks to be maybe about perhaps one to two inches on the surfaces there. So what's causing all that? Well, it's a very late winter storm there, and we can see on the map it's actually extending all the way up towards Illinois and Detroit. 34 with snow coming down there in Detroit, 34 in the Springfield, I guess Bloomington area, can't remember all those cities. However, up to the northeast, it is a little bit warmer. We get back in the 40s up there near Toronto and Ottawa. Leading edge of the front, pushing through just past Albany, into the Philadelphia area, through Louisville, and down towards Little Rock, where we have a Bear Clinic low, and another segment extending down through Texas. Strong cold air advection coming in through Dallas down to Abilene and Midland. And then we pick up this other wave out there around Gallup and Albuquerque. And that cold air is not quite flowed all the way down into Arizona. Part of the reason is the bulk of the cold air has moved southward into the Great Plains. Some of it has crossed over the passes and flowed into Wyoming, Idaho, Nevada, and moved south, but it's being countered by a vast amount of heating in the Southwest deserts. Now, I think it's possible that could have made some progress there through California. I need to look at a little bit more of the data, but I'm not seeing those strong northwesterly winds down the valley, although along the coast, yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of rain here and there. So that would deserve a little bit more closer scrutiny. And then down in Texas, the moisture has not really built back up. We've talked about how there's been offshore flow in the Gulf with north winds along the Gulf Coast. The return flow has not set up in the Rio Grande yet. And you can see there at our litmus test stations, Del Rio 46, 54 at Laredo, 55 at McAllen. Yeah, that moisture is just not set up. This is very much a early spring pattern. Here's how things stack up on the upper level charts, starting at 850 millibars, which is about 5,000 feet. Leading edge of the cold front, I'm guessing about like that. This is not really the chart we need to use. We need to go to the 850 temperature chart, so let's do that. Switch over and get that chart loaded there. And there we can see the push of cold air, because the front is defined by the thermal gradient. Now, it does look like right there in northern Arizona, there's some evidence of a 850 millibar low. And then the front extends down through about Tyler, down to Austin, and 
back towards around Marathon. This very closely follows the surface front, so it does not really tilt very much. It's kind of a steep front, and it extends back into New Mexico like that. So another takeaway from this is that there actually is a little bit of depth to the air mass because it is above 850 millibars. Look, look at all that up to the north. So it is definitely not pushed very far towards the southwest. Up at 700 millibars, which is about 10,000 feet. Yeah, that, that's a big bulky mass of cold air coming down through Minnesota, down to Wisconsin. Leading edge of the cold air, or I should say the 700 millibar cold front. Now that does tilt a little bit back towards the cold air. So that extends from just south of St. Louis down through Wichita Falls and back towards around Hobbs, New Mexico, and then back northward like that. Once again, the air here, it looks like some of that is actually flowing over the passes. You noticed how it was warm at 850 and very cold at 700 millibars in places like Idaho, Wyoming. That shows you that a lot of the cold air is being mixed down through mixing steep lapse rates and you get that overturning of air in that area that brings cold air down to the surface. And I do pick up that little 700 millibar upper level low over the northern California area. So looks like we're picking up an upper level system right there. Not much evidence of that in the lower levels, but it is a mid-level system. Let's grab a quick skew T in the middle of this stuff in Minnesota. Check out the core of that air mass. And you can see those steep lapse rates there just above freezing in the lower levels. We pick up some sort of an inversion that might be the top of the cold air at about 16,000 feet, and then a low tropopause above that. And then up at 500 millibars, 500 millibar front running about like that right there. So the implied bear clinic low over Iowa, and that connects down to the surface, down to that system there in northwestern Arkansas. So the bulk of the cold air, 500 millibars, that's over the Dakotas. And we see temperatures are about minus 35 at 500 millibars. That's a very, very cold air mass. And we'll polish things off with a 300 millibar chart showing the split flow pattern there. Now, I think this southern segment, that could be a subtropical system, although 300 millibars, that's going to be a little bit low for a subtropical system. We need to go to 500 millibars and see if that is supportive of a bear clinic zone, and it is. So I think that is just kind of like modified cold air in the lower level, supporting that jet existence there. But the main jet is tied up with that new front coming out of Canada into the Great Lakes. And then going up to 200 millibars, very, very strong flow along the Gulf Coast region. So I'm thinking this is kind of a hybrid polar front jet, subtropical jet. And we do see the axis running about like that. It's got that implied anticyclonic curvature, and it seems to originate from southern latitudes. So this could be either, you know, I'm thinking it could be something like this subtropical jet kind of rounding that ridge there and then tied up with elements of a polar front jet above this modifying cold air. Well, enough of the boring stuff. Let's check out the satellite. This is a great image here because if we pan up to the north, we can see the modification of the air mass taking place there in Kansas and Missouri. You can see that open cell cumulus there, large elements. And that's due to the very strong heating in the rear of this system. But where they have the cloud cover and maybe some of the wet bulbing going on, much colder temperatures within that convective cloud band, which is now shifting into the Boston mountains of Arkansas. As we get surface heating, you start picking up the front. And that's something we see even during severe weather days. So early in the morning, it can be very hard to find the boundaries. But if you just wait a little bit, the boundaries will reveal themselves. And that's what we have here. So now we can find the cold front. 
So there it is, pushing into Tyler, Austin, and the Hill Country. So back behind it, dry air advecting in to the rear of the system, and then you get further back to the north, and you get into some more of the upper air dynamics. However, just not much tropical air in place, so it is going to be a dry system. Going further up the boundary, we can see that zone of snow showers and cold rain showers. Looks like it's moving into the Indianapolis area down towards Toledo. And out ahead of it, I think that cold front is going to be roughly like that. So it's kind of showing up in the same manner. And up to the north, yeah, that's wholesale bulk cold air advection flowing southward. And that means gusty conditions, bumpy weather as you get that mixing with the warm surface. So anybody flying into these regions like Milwaukee, Des Moines, it's going to be very bumpy for that descent into the airport. Further to the north, the frontal zone moderated by very strong mid and upper level winds. So we're developing these gravity waves covering much of Pennsylvania and New York. Pretty spectacular there. The front itself, we've talked about how that's moving through the Hudson River Valley down through Philadelphia. And that's it right there. That's the front. And up to the north, some much cooler weather. Certainly a nice day in places like New York and Washington, D.C. Taking a look at the southwestern deserts, the strong heating has taken its toll on that air mass. We know that the front has moved into this region right here, but very strong modification taken place and just not much moisture at all. However, the air mass is cool. We saw it was 74 degrees there at Las Vegas, and this time of year, this should be well up into the 80s. And we know that mid-level system is present up there in Northern California, getting a few showers out of that in the mountains around Redding and Red Bluff. So we don't see much evidence of the system itself except for the streaks of high clouds. So this is when you want to go to the water vapor imagery. So there's certainly some evidence of something going on there. You can see the dry conditions aloft and some more of the tropical air just to the south. We actually have to zoom out a little bit. Sometimes it gets confusing if we're too zoomed in on the water vapor imagery. So taking care of that. Yeah, it's not completely uh, obvious, but I think that system is right in here. We, you can see that by the rotation of the cloud pattern and also the spiraling of the water vapor field back into the low. So that's it right there. And you can kind of use that to confirm what's on your upper air charts. Okay, 13 minutes in, we need to wrap it up. Let's take a quick look at what's in store over the next week to two weeks. You can see that cold air mass is pretty much dug in across the eastern two-thirds of the country. So that means very cool nights, freezes all the way down to Dallas, maybe down towards Atlanta, somewhere in there. And it's going to be kind of difficult to dislodge this cold air. Looks like maybe an upper level system riding on top of that. But you can see the moisture return, not really getting sorted up until Thursday and Friday. And with that, we'll get a bit of a pattern change. Looks like isentropic lift getting established on Friday with a, another surge of cold air coming south a little bit weaker. Of course, that's going to interact with that moisture at some point. And there it is starting already. Looks like an MCS maybe for Friday night, East Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas. And everything moves off quickly to the east, actually. Most of the cold air heading for the Midwest. And let's see here, front roughly like that. And you can see things are getting unsettled out west, which marks a shift in the patterns. See that? That looks like kind of a February, March storm there in California. Snows in the Sierra Nevadas. And it's crossing the Rockies around Monday next week and into the plains. And you can see the lee side low getting established there. Some very strong return flow. Don't know if that's tapping much moisture, but I think that is going to start setting up the dry line by Monday. 
next week. And with these dynamics coming out of the Rockies, let's see what happens. And doesn't look like a whole lot. These look kind of moisture starved in Oklahoma. So the dry line probably about there, the cold front emerging. This is going to be a Tuesday morning map. So here it looks like the system is out of phase with max heating. And it's only later in the day that we get storms going. Out around Tulsa, Fort Smith northern Kansas, maybe East Texas. So a pretty good blast of Pacific air coming into Texas about then and some Canadian air coming south. Again, this is Tuesday, the 27th. So it looks like probably we're going to see some severe watches going up for these areas here. Maybe something like that. We'll see how well my watch boxes are when we verify that on Tuesday. But things move eastward overnight for Wednesday and into the Midwest. And then for the next round of solar heating, looks like problems in Mississippi and Alabama. So the watch boxes, of course, these are probably going to be all wrong, but going to be about like that. After that, who knows? That's getting pretty far out, but uh, the overall pattern looks like another wave coming through Texas around the weekend for the 1st of May. And things getting busy once again in the northwest that's going to make its way into the plains sooner or later looks like in this case the central plains mostly and the midwest for the fifth and sixth and things are starting to look a little bit more like spring with storms getting established around the sixth in texas i did want to maybe take a quick look at europe and why not we do have a few viewers out there 40s and 50s, pretty mild. Don't see a whole lot of weather going on. A new push of cold air coming through the British Isles. And you can see the gusty winds up there in the North Sea. Scotland and the Faroe Islands. Nothing as strong as the cold blast we had a couple weeks ago. However, they too are seeing a transition into spring. Okay, hope you all have a great Tuesday. And a special thanks to the Merv our newest Patreon supporter. Thank you and welcome to the family. So that'll do it for our Tuesday edition. Hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care and have a great evening. Bye-bye.